Fabule. And um, also the work of Colleen Flood and her edited, edited book uh, a couple of years ago on this very topic that um, was very informative for this work. So I'm here today to pose the question, what if social insurance could pay for prescription drugs? So Canada is unusual internationally, as we know from this discussion today, and in the fact that it does not include ambulatory prescription drugs in its ben public benefits package and for its universal health systems. Instead, prescription drugs outside hospital are financed through a mix of private and public financing mechanisms with variations across provinces in the eligibility criteria for public programs and within provinces in the entitlements for insurance through, their, um, through employment and other individual characteristics. This situation raises a number of equity concerns and also begs the question why a medically necessary form of health care should be publicly insured in hospitals but not otherwise. So what are some of the possible policy options to this, to this problem? Well, there's a number of options, including perhaps reallocating uh, funds from hospital and physician services through perhaps efficiency gains in those sectors. Another could be through expanding public prescription drug programs that are publicly delivered um, in, in um, provinces. And this could be through more better um, pricing and reimbursement policies that can contain costs and then therefore expand coverage. Another set of options include raising revenues to fund the expansion of coverage. And so our work explores the possibility of raising revenues through a social insurance model as a way of achieving universal coverage. So what is social insurance? The models vary in their design across all jurisdictions. There's no one definition of what a social insurance model looks like. However, there's many features that they have in common. Some of these are listed here. For example, it is a method of raising revenue. The contributions are usually related to salaried wages, but they're always independent of an individual's risk, unlike in individual private insurance markets. The contributions may be shared between employers and employees. The revenue is earmarked for healthcare or for the particular sector in which the fund is, is in place. The collection agent is usually arm's length from government in contrast to general taxation financing. And participation is mandatory. And this could be either for the whole population or for specified groups. And this varies across the jurisdictions that have social insurance. So clearly, there's no one prescribed model. And the way it can be introduced can depend on the country's existing institutional historical characteristics and the public priorities in, in place. So what are the potential benefits of such a system? Well, the social insurance could be used to expand coverage, and in the, in the jurisdictions that have social insurance, they have achieved universal coverage for a comprehensive set of services, including prescription drugs, in their, in their public benefits. Another possibility is that social insurance would increase transparency because of the greater links that are in place between the revenues that are collected and the benefits that are received. And this increased transparency could be associated with greater political acceptability than, say, general tax revenue increases, which are not politically acceptable. And it could be partially because of this uncertainty as to where the, where the revenues are being directed. And in a similar vein, the uh, diversification of the public system's finding stream could be seen to improve public willingness to pay insofar as that it um, offers a new and as opposed to a, uh, an, an additional revenue generating mechanism, that, for example, general taxation. Um, it seems that in, in many jurisdictions that we've reviewed, they have relied on um, an, imp an increase in diversification. For example, social insurance models build, bringing in elements of general taxation and vice versa. And this could be seen as one way to address um, increasing costs in a politically acceptable way. However, there are many challenges, of course, with such a model. Um, in those jurisdictions that rely on social insurance to finance health systems, that and these um, programs rely mostly on employment income, they face significant financial sustainability concerns. Hence, we see increasing in contribution rates, and we see diversification of funding to draw on general taxation. So in the face of changing dem demographic and employment patterns, we would need to be cautious of an approach that only draws on employment income. Secondly, the, there is um, significant evidence that unless there's a single collection agent or a single risk pool, we would need to have in place sophisticated risk adjustment mechanisms to reduce the incentives for insurance funds to select risks. 
The European com countries offer many examples of how these systems can be developed and offer a tremendous um, a wealth of experience and we can learn a lot from how, how to develop technically these types of mechanisms, but clearly there's a need for them if we're, need, if we're wanting to reduce such incentives. And finally, and similarly, there's a, a complex set of regulations that are in place in systems that rely on social insurance. And these are needed in order to ensure universal coverage and to ensure a standard benefits <coughs> package, especially in the context of a um, private and not-for-profit insurance market, such as that we have in Canada, which would be um, especially relevant in pres with pres the financing of prescription drugs, where we have a very well-established private market for prescription drug insurance. And so to effectively integrate this private market into a uh, collective social insurance uh, model would require extensive regulatory um, arrangements that would um, be in, well, we've, we can learn a lot about which regulations would be needed from those jurisdictions that have approached um, a social insurance model in the same similar context. So these are sort of the main challenges that we can discuss and I'm looking forward to the debate. Thanks.